Okay. Shouldn't record that early in the morning. <laughs> okay. Did you know that the B1 battle droid is actually the best tank in the game? Okay, so maybe not the best tank in the game, but what it does and what it does really well is not getting one-shotted. And that means that he actually makes Malak's Drain the worst possible move in the game. So yeah, this team works because because the AI is dumb, basically. Well, it's not dumb, but the thing is that the AI in this game is either pretty dumb or hard-coded to do very specific stuff. Like, if you recall, uh, when JKR came into the game the first time, he was hard-coded to go for Treya every time the first time around, and then Niles. They did that again with, uh, with Malax, they probably will do that with uh, most chase tunes, you know, to make them feel a bit better. And these patterns are actually better all around, but for this team specifically, they actually help you immensely. So the first pattern you have to know is that Malak will, will always, always, always drain B1 if B1 is present. I mean it. I mean it, really. If B1 is there, B1 is getting drained. And that is absolutely stupid. But the thing is that Malak is probably, don't quote me on this, I don't know the code, but Malak is probably coded to go for any turn that has no protection with the drain. And you can see in some, uh, I will try to put some footage on it of some of my other bits, like uh, I have five tunes, only one doesn't have protection, he snipes it. And I was already asking myself some question at that point. But yeah, so Malak is, will kind of always go for, for B1, especially with the drain. He targets him a lot, but with the drain, he always goes for him. Then Raven, Raven, um, Raven always go for the leader when he attacks, and that's you know that's kind of expected, you know, because all of his kit is aimed at killing a leader. So most people put a taunt to protect their leader. We're not going to do that. You're going to see why too. And Sith Empire in general uh, aims at uh, the weaker guys. Uh, Sith Empire tries to kill people. You know, they're, they're not the good guys. But that also means that uh, since you do mod T3 and 4 to be really tanky. He's kind of safe because even if he takes like one pop shot, uh, he's fine because he's really tanky, and the rest of the hits just go for BB8 most of the time or for the leader if he's there because he has death mark. Yada yada. The point is, I almost never get my T3 to die even if I'm not protecting him very well with that team. With that team because B1 is there and B1 is the best tank. L let me show you. Um, so let, let's start the, the footage a bit. Let me show you what happens really with B1. That's a good example. Drain, B1. Okay, get him another second threshold. Drain, B1. That will happen every time. Every time. So, for that team, what you want is that you want the turn order to be as such. You want BB8 to play first. And be careful. Be careful. Spoiler alert. This is weird. 
okay? Then you want B1 to play, then you want IG88, T3 and Grievous. The team, I'm telling that to you already, does need to be a bit faster than usual. I do advise 210 speed to be the minimum for Grievous, for this to succeed. Okay. So, and this time I will try not to screw up on the Zetas. You do need, again, Metalid Monstrosity and Grievous. That's a given. You have to put that data on Grievous, otherwise not a single version of the new team works. Same thing for Tactical Combat Upgrade, and not the other one as I did last time, but yeah. These two Zetas, again, Metalid Monstrosity and uh, Tactical Combat Upgrade, are the two ones that you need to make any kind of new team work. Okay, okay. Now that this is out of the way, uh, you want Droid Battalion on B1, because that basically doubles his tankiness, because yes, B1 is your tank. And then I do very, very, very strongly recommend that you slap the second Zeta 43. I, that does open you to some really good option, like, um, like well, like you saw at the very first um, very first try that I did with that team at the very start of the video, I one-shotted Malak first turn. Yeah, uh, without that Zeta, I can't do that. So yeah, slapping that second Zeta. I know it sounds like a stretch, but I still hardly believe that the droids will be there kind of for always now, and that it's kind of an amazing Zeta. I mean, against anything but Sith Empire, it's just really really good actually so yeah slapping the zetas and cat and dog are just messing my desk up but yeah those zetas you have to play with them so then let's go tune by tune so bb8 bb8 is easy bb8 you don't really care that it's even easier than it was before uh whatever just have him play first uh give him some protection yeah that's kind of cool if he's a bit survivable but he doesn't need to be as much as in the uh, l3 team or anything so you know whatever just have bb8 that's already pretty good gear 9 is fine because you just need the unique but everyone has a gear 12 bb8 or almost everyone so now the star of the show the star of the show let me let me uh, show him in all of his glory yeah here you go so the star of the show is b1 so B1, I did make the team work with a gear 11 B1, but the team becomes uh, like exactly just better every time you slap something else on B1, because all B1 is there to do is add some extra damage. Well, and of course tanking like a freaking boss, because B1 is like the best in that team. But yeah, I would advise a gear 13 B1. Because he's like amazing and he does like insane damage and I don't have him myself. Uh, my B1 right now is at gear 12 uh, with um, a, a bayonet and that's kind of it. But the higher you get him, the better he gets and the better this team gets. Because he will like double his damage output between gear 12 and gear 13. So go ahead if you can slap the gear 13 if you want to go for this team and this team only. I mean, the, the gear 13 for B1 will be useful wh wherever you use him, but for this team, yeah, the higher the better. The, really, the higher the better. So, same thing. For this modding, it's not that specific. It's just that you want him to play really often, and you want him to hurt. So, you want him to be fast and to hurt. It's kind of depending on your mods, really. As long as it fits in the turn order, you can go for attack or for speed. That's kind of on you. So, uh, just try to get him fast, just try to get him strong, and give him just a bit of potency, because that's like the only thing that works. Once you have your attack or your speed set, your second set should be potency, because that's the only stat that he actually kind of cares about, because he's going to land target lock from time to time, and eh, and that's it. But yeah, as much attack as possible, as much as, much, as, much attack as possible. Um, you, you slap him with the, an attack cross and an attack triangle, and if you're able to get him in a turn order with an attack arrow, that's actually absolutely amazing, and he will be doing some amazing stuff for you. But yeah, really, that guy is amazing. That, that yeah, B1, I just love B1. I, I love the kit, I love the character, I love B1. B1 is love. B1 is love. So IG-88, and I will take a bit of time to say that 
this is what you want for your IG-88 if you're using him as your lead on any kind of nuke team. The, the, one of the biggest complaints I get about people going for the nuke are the ones who have some IG-88 that are low gear and that are modded with like pre damage. No. If you want the nuke teams to work and if you want IG-88 to be worth the leader spot, well first off, he doesn't give good damage to the rest of the team if you don't have debuffs. So if you don't land debuffs with him, he's straight worst than HK47. He also gives 10% less crit chance. So that also means that your modding for the whole team will be harder. So you want an IG-88 that works. Before I say anything else, for this team, yes, HK lead can work, but you have way less options on how the team goes. Okay, okay. So, you want your IG-88 to be gear 12 and to have the multi-tool that gives plus 10% potency. That is critical. That is so important because that just helps you mod him so much. Then you want to give him only potency and crit chance sets and that's it. You want a speed arrow because he is a slow fuck. Then you want a potency cross and a crit chance triangle and you want to get him at 80% critical chance because that means he gets to 100%, no need to give him any more than this, and then you want 100% potency, no less. Okay, once you have that, yes, you can use IG-88 as your lead. Now that is said and done, I don't want any more questions about how to mod your IG-88 because it's there. Okay, okay. Next one, T3 and 4, kind of the same, basically kind of the same as usual. Gear 12, really, eh, yeah, that's a lot better because they actually target him more if he's not gear 12, uh, because he's, you know, less tanky. So this team actually doesn't really need him to have any potency, and you can see that I kind of changed my mind, because I did a lot of testing around, and actually crit chance might be a liability for you, but you can get rid of it, so, eh, but, so, you want 3 HP sets, you want, like, Four protection primaries as always, so tanky tanky tanky, aim for 110,000 health and protection combined, give him a bit of potency because that never hurts. For crit chance, actually if he doesn't crit Malak when he hits with his AoE, you have more options. So for, it, it's not like, it's not the best one, but uh, this team actually has some, uh, some more tweaks and uh, some more little things to it. So, against certain teams, you might want this chance of having an easier life because you can like crawl Bastila first, like you do with IPD, you know? It, it's not like, just don't focus on giving him crit chance, you know? If he has no crit chance on his mod, that's perfectly fine. That's not like a death sentence, but don't focus on giving him any, actually. Yeah, I know that sounds kind of weird. And against everything else, but here you go. And for good old Grievous. So I'm not, yeah, that's basically the same as it was before. Uh, yeah, that's exactly the same as it was before. But since you're using a G88 lead, yeah, uh, since you're using a G88 lead, you want to go for a 72% crit chance, not uh, not 62. And I did put the speed benchmark a bit higher because I start. Um, I started now. I train a lot against very fast teams, and this team right here lands so much debuffs that most of the time Seat Empire becomes faster because of the debuffs and can outrun a 206 speed Grievous like I had before. So I had to put my Grievous a bit higher speed than it was. I do advise you to go for 210. I mean. It's not like absolutely mandatory that you get there, but if they play before you, you know where it came from. And also this team might get full feared if you don't. Because again, spoiler alert, BB-8 is drunk. He doesn't taunt. Yes, I know, that is weird. <laughs> so, uh, what I want to say about this is that if you can't get your Grievous to be this strong, that's not a death sentence either, but you should go for the L L3 comp because it has the HK lead. Or you can try this comp 
with the HK lead, but it's it's worth. It's really a lot better with IG. But if you can't get your Grims there, go for HK lead with L3. Or go for HK lead with this, you know, but yeah, that that's not uh, that's not really relevant. I think I actually didn't uh, I'm I'm just I put this together yesterday, so yeah. So here, here we are. I thought I had the second screen or something, but no, I don't. So yeah, um, let's see how this works, shall we? Okay. So as usual, no, not as usual. BB8 will not taunt. I repeat, do not taunt with BB8. Dink. He didn't taunt. Then. Do the AoE because you know that's what you do. That clears the foresight. So now, boom, you have kind of a lot of debuffs on the field. And actually, that's uh, I hadn't noticed before. You can see here that dodge. That's dodge. Vasila just dodged the AoE. So that is poor RNG on my part, isn't it? Yes, it is. AoE with T3. And now, let's start playing. Bing. So here you go. So that is with a um, that is with the dodge from Bastilla. So I have way less debuffs on the field that I could have. Look at that monstrosity of a hit without any ferocity on the field. Okay, let's keep going. Drain on B1, of course, always. Then Raven targets the leader, of course, always. And the leader has fear because he hit Malak before, so Raven does a basic attack too. There you go. He's almost dead. They keep doing their thing. Raven's turn again. There is no HK left. Sometimes HK is alive. That doesn't change a thing. That really doesn't change your single thing to the fight. Here you go. Boom, boom, boom. Finished. So this this was a really easy fight. You know that 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 was like perfect case scenario. I would be lying if I would tell you that it was going that fine all the time. Most of the time, actually, Malak is alive at the end, as you will see in the video. But let's let's do it again. This time, this team has more order, right? So, uh, yeah, still not rolling. Uh, yeah, who am I going for? Oh, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, HK. You know, he has good tenacity, so might as well give him low tenacity. Might as well try to target Lock Malak. Do AoE. Do AoE. Okay. And now... Oh no, actually this time, other strat possible. Go for Malak. As uh, the, the last uh, strat I used, I try to trigger Drain actually. So this team is so good and so consistent that you can actually do multiple things and it still works. The thing is, oh, do you see? Another Drain on B1. If you do what I just did, you're opening yourself to the possibility that Marauder will one-shot T3 and 4. That almost never happens, but it did happen to me once. Once on like two days of testing non-stop But once he did so if you don't want that to happen do AOE because if you do AOE Marauder actually dies, but yeah, uh, so rain on B1 Fear on the leader. Yep See he goes for the lower one Then bink, you know good shot. Yeah, you took eight stacks Oh, yeah, see, always go for the lower ones. Now it's just the good old. Wabow! So, this was the screenshot that I used to uh, fuck with you, my Discord people. Um, none of you seems to notice that actually you can see the damage from the B1 assist at the start. Oh, did, shoot, I'm not getting it, but on, on the script that I actually send you. Yeah, you can see the, the little uh, dot there and you can see the heal. So yeah, there was a clue. There was a clue, guys. So let's keep going. Uh, what is that fight again? Yeah, I mean that's that's just another one, you know. 
classic. I went for Marauder this time. Yeah, it doesn't change almost anything. Yeah, it doesn't change a thing, actually. So, AoE, AoE, AoE. Uh, I don't know. Let's do AoE too. No, I didn't. Okay, I still went for Malak. He still drains B1. Okay. So, again, this is a bit lucky because, see, this one he went for BB8. He always goes for one of those ones. Um, you will see a lot more footage in the end. I do think that uh, going AoE with Grievous is actually a bit better. So, see, there. This is the situation that you will be in most of the time. You will be against a lone Malak with three of your droids remaining, and B1 is going to tank every single drain that he does. Usually, getting to that point was bad, because that meant that Malak was going to drain your droids and you would be dead. But now, just look what happens. Okay, it's still a bit long. Okay, he takes out T3. Not a big deal. I still have a healing, um, healing immunity on him that I can lay down. Just go how much he goes for B1. I can stun him because there is no Raven left. And B1 is still there. Drain on B1. Just, I'm just, yeah, keep going. This move is the only one that he does on uh, Grievous sometimes. That's the only move that someone goes for, for uh, Grievous. See, the basic, the drain, again. Basic drain, basic drain on B1. Bye bye. So that's actually, that could be seen, I don't know, like maybe you could see that as, as an exploit, but I don't think that is. Uh, that's just how the AI is hard coded to work. They did that. They did that. Oh, so this is another possibility. Yeah, one shot Bastila first. If you can one shot Bastila, and that's why I don't really advise you to put too much uh, critical chance on your T3, then you never had corrupted battle meditation. So, <coughs> yeah, you just blow them up anyway. So you can crawl up Malak, you can crawl up Bastila, or you can just say OE, and it always works. I love that team. That's absolutely amazing. That that's yeah, that's really. An amazing team to play against, to play with, and to play against because yeah, the, the guy did try a lot and it was kind of fun. So this team can lose on this exact situation. It can lose on a very specific kind of target that is the very very fast Malak. If you get to that point, and Malak just goes draining B1, but Malak is just playing 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 because he he has like um, the the guy I did most of my testing against has a 327 speed on his Malak, uh, yeah, you can lose against that. But that's, most of the time that never happens, and you just plain win, like, almost every time. I'm not saying every time because that, a little thing that is left, but you're going to leave a very low life Malak. I mean, just, just, I, I'm talking and see, that team is already dead. Malak even dies before, because that team hurts so much. And uh, as you can see, uh, B1 is killing people, that's that's a gear 12, he's doing like half the DPS he could be doing at gear 13. Just look at that. J just look at the footage. So yeah, these, these, um, these are the stats of the team I did like 80% of my testing against. I did test against most of the teams of my shard, but I actually did such a good job of giving people ideas to put uh, Malak away that the Malaks don't really stand in top 10 of my shard anymore. <laughs> Oops. Uh, but yeah, so this is the guy Schmertz, again, a guy from my guild, uh, the um, Ewok Strikes Back. Uh, and he actually, yeah, was my punching bag for most of this. Just just a quick run at his stats, okay? So, mo I, I get some people think, oh, you're playing against shit teams, and no, that that's the team I'm playing against. I mean, you, you can pause, you can see what his... Uh, I put both Marauder and Trooper because he put both for me to test against. But no, this is a really good team. Actually, this is kind of an amazing team. And uh, yeah, I, I want just to showcase. So this is his Bastila. Uh, if, maybe she's in the tankier one. Okay, maybe she's Bastila is in the tankier one. But that is Malak, okay? That, that's his Malak. That, that's, that's a tough nut to crack, guys. And he actually is the only guy I managed to lose against sometimes. So I won every game except some games against this guy where I get bad RNG and I get uh, Malak alone at the end. So yeah, just just check what is happening right now. That That's a fight, okay, 
that's a fight that I did lose because his Malak is so fast that he just plays like crazy at the end. So, yeah, Bastila doesn't really fall uh, too early. Oh, also, before I forget, what I'm saying to you right now, losing the game sometimes, it's only versus Trooper. Moreover, teams, I never lost. Never. Against Trooper, sometimes, since I have less options, I can go crawl and see, like, right now, I could, like, go crawl Bastila, but I can't. And, yeah, she still dies, but that would have been a lot better option for me. So, yeah, yeah, I, I'm speaking in the background. What? Why am I speaking in the background? But, yeah, here you go. Now, this situation is same as usual, but just look at... Yeah, he takes a turn. He takes another turn. I get a turn with one guy. I get a turn with two guys. Then he takes a turn. Then he takes another turn. See that he always drains B1. Again, drain B1, always. Drain B1, always. Takes a turn. And I don't get a crit because of his um, uh, natural uh, crit avoidance. And see, I get like extremely close. But I can lose these games only if the Malaks are this fast. Okay? Okay. So, some reminders. IPD NHK uh, plus L3 exist. That's the third team I'm bringing you to beat Malak reliably today. Okay? That's the third team you can use to beat Malak reliably as for the nuke. Okay? Three different teams. If you can't make any of these three teams work, maybe that's not my fault. Okay? I just had to take this out of my system, you know? I I'm just a guy. I'm just a guy, but I had to say it. Here, I say that. Do not roll with BB-8. That's the whole point of the team. Do not roll with BB-8. I know that's so weird, but don't, okay? So yeah, AoE, 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 and you AoE, and you go for AoEs and whatnot. And crawling at ba and Bacillate Malax works too. Everything works. Just sort out what works best. Uh, like, you might need to crawl some Malax because they are tankier, so that kind of depends on the team you're fighting. But you don't have to change the mod, you just have to maybe try another turn order. That's really easy. So, for the end game, crawl those more damage. Okay, crawl those more damage than the rest of the moves. But Grievous Basic gives healing immunity, and that's kind of huge on Malak. Because though on the drain he only gains 1 HP, on the other moves he gains full HP even if he hits B1. That's kind of stupid, but uh, you can see somewhere in the footage too that if he goes for the basic on B1, he gains a ton of health back if he doesn't have basic units. And also don't forget, if Revan is dead, you can stun uh, or ability block anyone else. Grievous can stun, T3 and 4 can ability block on his basic. Don't forget it. That, that's very helpful actually. So yeah, go ahead, do that. But that's that's really an easy way to go, and that's that's a lot funnier to use. Actually, I have a lot of fun using this team because I love B1, because B1 is a fucking boss. Uh, so, again, saying it again, the fight is a bit harder versus Trooper because you have less options. Because Trooper will have taunt the second time around if you didn't like outright kill him uh, with the AOE. So you won't be able to crawl at Bastila, and sometimes you won't be able to crawl at Malak. And against certain teams. That's kind of the way to go. So, yeah, that's another team that is like 100% against Marauder, but is a bit harder to play versus Trooper. I really don't think that's a big deal. I think that's a great team, and you should use it, because B1 is amazing. I'm going to leave you with um, a bit more footage uh, of uh, different tries that I did. Uh, so you will see various stuff. Uh, that's like, um, I, I took them uh, like from every moment of the, the, the testing process, so you will see HK47, you will see different moves, at one point I think I even rolled with BB-8, which is absolutely stupid, but it's just, you see, I mean, this one is already over, so yeah, um, oh no, it's not, this is, and I'm still talking behind it, but yeah, this is to show you uh, that the team just works fine, that is great, and that Actually, a lot of different things work. I mean, look at this. BB-8 is still alive, and he's still going for B1. 
How stupid is that? That's that's the AI right there at work. Get that shock off already. Yeah, please get that shock off already. But yeah, see, that's 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 how it goes. That's that's easy. That's a great team. Get it to work, guys, and I strongly recommend that you get your uh, your uh, B1 Battle Droid to Gear 13. He's amazing. He hurts a lot. See you guys. I hope you had some fun. I did. I had a lot of fun. This team was great to put together. And I do actually think that's even better than the other ones. So, yeah. Thanks a lot for watching. And uh, until the next time. Thank you for playing the game on Discord to know uh, which team it was and who was the fifth one. I hope I didn't fuck you up too much. <laughs> uh, I just don't like spoilers. See you next time, guys. And thanks a lot for all the supports.